The C64 Mini launched in PAL territories in late March 2018 to mixed reaction. While some loved the form factor, sharp HDMI output and convenience, a lot of others were somewhat miffed that the purported ability to load your own disk images was restricted to a convoluted file renaming process. While Retro Games Limited, the makers of the C64 Mini, have finally released new firmware to coincide with the Mini's North American release that includes the highly vaunted USB loader. To install the latest firmware to your Mini, use your favourite web browser to go to the C64 main website page and click on the Get Latest Firmware button, and it will take you to the upgrade page. Click on the download link under the latest firmware. At the time of recording the footage for this video, the latest was 1.1.0, but by the time this video is published, the latest firmware build is 1.1.2, which goes on to fix a couple of issues around file behavior within the USB loader. Once the file has downloaded, copy the firmware file onto the root of your USB stick that you will use to load images from your mini. Now, it's simply a matter of connecting the USB stick to your Mini, booting it up, and then going into the system menu. Then we go into system information. The Mini should pick up that you have the latest firmware on your USB. You will then select apply. The Mini will then go through the process of flashing the new firmware. When it's done, you will notice that you now have an additional icon at the bottom of the screen. This is the USB loader function. Go ahead and select the USB loader. You'll be taken into a straightforward looking no thrills menu system for you to navigate through. The USB loader is capable of loading a number of different types of image formats. Let's try loading up a D64 image. As expected, it works with no problem, and we still have the save state functionality intact. Next, we will try a cartridge image. Looks good there. Tape images are also supported, so I'll try loading up the tape image of Rocky Memphis, The Legend of Atlantis. It works, and we can already see that the USB loader is starting to be a versatile utility. We'll try one more. This time I will load up the PRG image of Organism. It works. The Mini's USB loader also provides some configurability at, the, at an image level. The default joystick port for the Mini is port 2. This is a problem for games such as Bruce Lee, which require a joystick in port 1 to play the game. Well, to get around this problem, you need to rename the file name image so that it includes underscore J1 at the end. So now when we go back in to launch Bruce Lee, the USB loader will know that we want the primary joystick port to be port 1 and we are able to play the game.
there will be several images that do not load unless you have accurate disk drive mode turned on. Here I try to load a demo version of Space Mogul's upcoming game to be released by Protovision. As you can see, the game freezes during loading, as by default, accurate disk drive is not enabled. So to switch this on, we need to rename the image file by adding an underscore AD to the end of the file name. When we try loading the game up now, it works. By the way, it is possible to map the joystick buttons, but this requires the creation of a CGM mapping file to be created for each image. Bit of a pain, but the C64 website provides clear instructions on how to do this if you are keen. Okay, now let's try multi-disc images. I'll load up my version of California Games, which has two sides. The game will prompt me to insert the second disc, Um, how do I insert the second disc? Unfortunately, I can't. There is no option to do so. It appears that the USB loader does not accommodate multi-disc images. What a shame, as the USB loader was looking good up to this point. So there we have it. The addition of the USB loader is a major plus for the mini emulator and is sure to please many. It definitely is a major step forward and makes the product far more useful than what it was at launch time. It accommodates many different image formats and provides a solution to the joystick port 1 issue. Unfortunately, the absence of support for multi-disc images will prevent the Mini from being useful to me personally. So for now, it's back to the shelf for the C64 Mini. Luckily, I have the Ultimate 64 to satisfy all my gaming needs.